Hokey dokey. In this problem, we are given a function f prime of x, the equation for f prime, and the goal is to identify the graph of f of x. So this equation might look a little intimidating. Let's break down or narrow down the pieces that we need to look at. Typically, we only need to focus on, say, the x squared term, but really, more importantly, the x plus 1 factor. Because in general, the first step is to identify the x value that makes f prime equal to 0. And when we think about x plus 1, the x value that makes x plus 1 equal to 0 is negative 1. Because think about if we plugged in negative 1 in place of this x, we'd have negative 1 plus 1. That would be 0. And because everything here is being multiplied together, then that means f prime should equal 0 when x equals negative 1. The other x value that makes f prime 0 is 0. Because when plugged into x squared, uh, we get 0. And that multiplied by everything else also makes f prime equal to 0. And so f prime the derivative, or in other words, the slope of f is equal to 0 at these two x values. So we're looking first for the function that has a 0 slope at negative 1 and at 0. Again, the negative 1 is the more important piece. So as we kind of scan up and down the negative 1s, the x equals negative 1s for all these graphs, we can see that nothing is really going on at negative 1 for C, D, or E. We don't have a zero slope or a max or min at negative 1 for any of these except for A and B. So we narrow it down to A and B, and then we recognize that A and B are sort of just opposites of one another. So what we do is we plug in an x value that, I guess, for which a and b have different behaviors in terms of their slopes. So a good go-to every single time is x equals positive 1 half. If we plug in x equals 1 half to f prime, and we identify the sign, whether f prime is positive or negative at one half, that'll tell us whether the slope of f is positive or negative, respectively. So watch what we can do by hand. We could plug this into a calculator, but if we just do this, we'll do f prime at one half equals three. We'll do the e term. We'll do x squared, and we'll do x plus one and we split it up into these different terms being multiplied together. And what we're gonna do is identify their sign. So three is positive. E, a big takeaway is no matter what the exponent of E is, E is always positive. So, you know, keep that in mind when you're going about this problem if you want to work it out by hand. X squared, if we're plugging in one half to X squared, Really, anything uh, squared is positive, so x squared is especially positive. And then plugging in 1 half to x plus 1 will keep this factor positive. So across the board, positive times a positive times a positive times a positive will tell us or will give us f prime at 1 half being positive. So if f prime at 1 half is positive, we know that the slope of f is positive when x equals 1 half. That's very, very important. It's not just positive the whole time, but it's positive at 1 half because we plugged 1 half into f prime. So when we look at these graphs at 1 half and at 1 half, we can see that b has a very positive slope while a has a very negative slope at x equals 1 half. So we're looking for the one that had a positive slope, positive f prime value at one half. So when we break out the eraser, we see that B is our answer. Let's go and do two more examples real quick. We look at the factor, the x plus one or x minus one factor, to tell us 
x equals negative 1 will make f prime equal to 0, which means that at negative 1 on the correct graph here, we should have either a max or a min or just a flat 0 slope. So a and b are looking pretty solid while there's really nothing going on at negative 1 for these last three graphs. So then, let's plug in x equals 1 half to f prime. We can break it up with the e term, e to the x, and then x plus 1. e is always positive. And then if we're plugging in 1 half to x plus 1, it stays positive. And so we get positive times positive, which remains positive. So we're looking for the function that has a positive slope at 1 half, and that is option B. So we break out the eraser to see that B is our answer. Doing one more real quick. We look at f prime and we kind of identify or we want to like you know uh, what's the word like go towards that factor first or you know use that factor first so when x equals one or sorry if we have x minus one we get an x value of one or when we plug one into x minus one it gives us zero therefore f prime equals zero at x equals one so at x equals 1, we want sort of a flat slope. So when we're scanning through these options, we see that b and c have nothing going on at x equals 1. So no flat slopes, no zero slopes in those options. In option d, we do see a flat slope at 1, but we also see a flat slope at negative 1. But there was nothing in f prime here that told us we should have a zero slope at negative one and so d is off the table as well something to keep in mind is that it'll never be these very symmetrical looking ones so don't worry about those as an answer choice so we're looking at either option e or option a and so let's do our x equals one half plugging in one half to f prime so breaking it up nicely, starting with negative 2. Then our e term, again, it does not matter that the exponent here is negative 2x. e will always be positive. All right. So analyzing the signs here, we have a negative. We have, I'll jump to... Uh, this one here. If we plug in 1 half to x minus 1, we'll have 1 half minus 1, which will also result in a negative. And then like we said, e is always positive, and x, if we are plugging in 1 half, 1 half is positive. So we have two negatives, two positives being multiplied. An even number of negatives will lead to a positive. So then really we have a positive times a positive times a positive, and that will give us a positive. So f prime of 1 half or at 1 half is positive, which means the slope of the function f at 1 half is positive. So looking very closely here, at 1 half we have a negative slope on this graph. At 1 half we have a positive slope on graph A. So A is our answer. If you have any questions on the process for this problem, please let me know. Hope this helps.